Today is Sunday, April 5th, and welcome to episode 28th of... 28th? 28th of Knits and Stuff. Um, my name is Alicia, and today we'll be talking about finished objects, works in progress, local delights, and wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Um, first, welcome to those of you that are new, and for those of you that are returning, thanks for coming back. Um, if you haven't already, there's a group in Ravelry that you can join. It's called the Knits and Stuff Podcast. And um, I'll put a link in, t in the show notes, which are at knitsandstuff.wordpress.com. So let's get started. Um, finished objects. I have something almost finished, pretty much finished. Um, so I've been doing some drop spindling. And this is what it looks like. Um, the right focus. So there we go. Um, so this is uh, Daybreak Dye Works. Um, they were hand dye Rolex, and it was a mix of Cordell, Merino, Yak Down, and Sparkle. Um, so they came in, it was about like 20 or so, or yeah, I think like 20 or so Rolex, um, and I split them in half, um, and they were um, I showed these a while ago, like back in episode two or something, <laughs> and uh, the way they were uh, prepared was um, they had like a yellow color at the top, and then it went down to this like gray color, and then um, it went down to the green that you see here. So, um, so what I did was I took about ten of those roll eggs and spun them um, reverse. In reverse kind of <laughs> so I spun it from one side and then I took the next roll leg and spun it from the opposite the opposite end so the colors were kind of going back and forth um, if that makes any sense and then I took the other half of those roll legs and just spun them end to end so that um, the color progression was in order um, and then I applied those two together so that is um, what you're seeing now is a two ply on my drop spindle um, and this is a shacked drop spindle, it's one of their, um, I think it's a one ounce, one and a half ounce spindle. Um, and yeah, so I just finished this. It hasn't been um, washed yet, but it looks right now to be uh, maybe uh, in between sport weight. Some parts might be a worsted, <laughs> some parts might be a fingering, it's a little thick and thin. Um, yeah, so if you can kind of see what that looks like. So, yeah, that, I'm excited. I've been doing a little more drop spindling recently. So, it's good to have this, this done. And, so yeah, finished object, yay! Um, and that's all I have for finished objects. So, works in progress. Um, I am, I haven't done any soft knitting in the past couple weeks, but I have been working on the two shawls. Um, the first one is the Winter Sea Shawl by Liz Abenante. And oh, this is, as you can see, I haven't done that much. <laughs> this is where I was last time I talked about it. Um, and I am done about an inch or so of progress. So um, this is out of a uh, verb for keeping warm clover in uh, the colorway beach gloss and I'm knitting it on uh, US 6's 4.0 millimeters on my Addy Natura Clicks, the bamboo interchangeables. So yeah, this is coming along. I like it. It's getting longer and longer to do each row, so um, making slow progress, but yeah, that is, that is one shawl. And then, I'm also working on the Hitchhiker Shawl. Um, this is by, oh, by Martina Bem. And I can show it up close. Um, and then, I've got, I think, like 23 points. As so far they, um, every few rows you make a, a little point and then the whole pattern is supposed to be 42 of them so I'm halfway but not really halfway because it gets bigger as you keep knitting um, but this is 
Hitchhiker by Martina Bem. Um, it's on, uh, or it's out of, um, worsted weight, even though the pattern calls for fingering weight. I'm making mine a little bit bigger. And it is Miss Babs Yowza What a Skin in the colorway First Dibs. Um, and I'm knitting it on US 7s, 4.5 millimeters, and these are Crystal Palace bamboo needles. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Coming along. Really easy. Mind I really like this pattern. Very mindless knitting um, and easy to memorize. So I don't need to carry a pattern around. I can just bring it wherever and pull it out. Um, as long as it doesn't get too big, because I still have quite a large skein <laughs> um, left. So that's that's a lot of like, yarn still left in there. But yeah, that's coming along. And um, I'm also, I don't know if I would call this a work in progress, but um, I am doing more drop spindling on the larger shacked spindle. Um, this is just some, I think it's merino, well no, it's not merino. I think it's like a BFL or some, um, some beginner wool that I bought from, uh, this was I think some of the first wool or first fiber that I bought when I started drop spindling. Um, I believe I got this from uh, the Webster's store in or in Ashland, Oregon. Um, pretty sure it was a long time ago, <laughs> so I'm not sure what the fiber is. And um, yeah, but I've just been kind of wanting to to do some more drop spindling, so I just done. Um, I just pulled this out and did. I don't know, I'm not really, I don't have a goal for this, I was just kind of spinning. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with it after I'm done, but I have, I think I got about two ounces of this color and then two ounces of a pink color, and I think I had planned to like ply them together, but I'm not sure if I want to do that at all. Or um, I might just like, I don't know, ply, ply this with something else and maybe make a hat out of it. I don't know, something, something like that. Um, so that's... That's more drop spindling, and also, um, I have been spinning on my, um, on my wheel, and I'm still working on the loop bullseye bump, and talked about this a little last time, but this is what's remaining of, of the bump, um, it's a self-striping, um, self-striping, roving not roving exactly but um, fiber in uh the colorway seriously sorry so it has some sorry silk pieces in it which you can kind of see when i pull out the uh the wheel so let me bring that over oh so this is it on the bobbin so that is the um the singles, they're slowly filling up with the bobbins, so I'm going to have to split it into two two bobbins. Um, and then I plan on uh, Navajo plying it afterwards into a three-ply yarn to keep the color progression as the striping. So, But you can see the little speckles in that green, that mint green. Those are, um, some of those are uh, the sari silk and some is just the purple. So that's also coming along. And hopefully I'll be done with that soon, and then I can ply it up um, and maybe be able to see the finished product product next time. But yeah, that is all of works in progress. Um, I don't have any pretty things, although I almost did, but I um, <laughs> haven't bought anything new. So that would bring us to Local Delights. So um, a few weeks ago, we, this is going to be another burger place, um, we went to a place called Umami Burger, you might have heard of it, they have, um, a couple of locations, well, quite a few locations in LA, um, some locations around the Bay Area, and I think they have a couple other ones out of state, too, um, but they are a casual burger restaurant, um, they make really tasty burgers, they have some, um, I'm not too out there combinations, but they're just good, good burgers. Caramelized onions are always good. Um, but what's really good is their truffle fries. Um, those were delicious. Uh, they were fries with the truffle oil, and I think they had garlic in them, and so good. 
Um, so if you go there, you should definitely try their truffle fries. And I had the Cali burger, and that was also very good. Um, but really, it's it's the truffle truffle fries, <laughs> and the sweet potato fries were also good. We got that too. But um, yeah, that is. So we went to the one in um, in uptown Oakland or what's considered uptown Oakland um, close to the Paramount Theater and um, yeah it was really good so highly recommend go there um, yeah that is local delights <laughs> so um, moving on to wibbly wobbly timey wimey um, I know Doctor Who is coming back in August so I'm excited for that it's really far away from now though <laughs> Um, but I just wanted to share a clip that um, they put out on, I think, their Facebook account. Um, they had a clip of the doctor wishing everyone Happy Easter, so I figured I would share that, and I will link to it in the show notes. Um, I don't think I can actually splice it into this podcast. There's probably some copyright issues there, but um, yeah, that... Uh, I'll put a link to it in the show notes and you guys should check it out for those of you that are Doctor Who fans. It's just a short like 15 second thing, but it's cute. So um, yeah, that is all for Wibbly Wobbly Time You Want Me and it looks like this is going to be a shorter show this time, um, but I should be recording again in two weeks um, and yeah, social media stuff. I'm Eliana Nitz on Ravelry and Unperfect529 on um, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, anything else really. Um, and yeah, there's, don't forget, there's a group in Ravelry called Knits and Stuff Podcast, and you should join, say hi. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully I will see you guys in two weeks, and thanks for watching. Bye!